Hello, my name is Lewis Talley with InSource Solutions, and today I'd like to talk to you about optimizing a Wonderware VM image. The information contained in this video is not specific to VMware and is really applicable to any image or physical operating system that's going to be running various pieces of Wonderware technology. So let's take a look at what some of those settings are. And the information presented here is in no particular order. This is just a collection of things that have been pulled from various places in best practices documentation and things that we've learned in the field over the years. So let's take a look at some of those settings. So the first place I like to start is in Server Manager. So in Server 2008 R2, this is accessed via the Start button, Administrative Tools, and Server Manager. That's highlighted on the screen. I like to turn off IEESC and this just makes it easier if you're browsing the internet so you don't have to add every single website in as a trusted website. So the key to getting to this is clicking on the actual server object at the top where it's highlighted and then selecting configure IESC. And I like to turn it off for administrators as well as for users. The next thing is under control panel under all control panel items, power options, you want to set your power options to high performance. More than likely this will probably already be set for balanced and under balanced there's some things that for instance the monitor turns off, I think the hard drives can if not being used can go idle. You want to set this for high performance so we can maximize the, um, the virtual guest resources that are being allocated to the image. The next thing we want to do is turn off the user account control. So this may or may not already be off. Depending on the various Wonderware technology versions that you're using, the software may be compatible with this, although I recommend turning it off. It's an easy fix to turn it off. So go under the control panel, all control panel items, user accounts, click the change user account control settings button, and turn off the UAC. Now this does require a reboot. So you can wait till you're finished making all your changes and then reboot at the end or reboot it after this step. So the next thing under the control panel is system options. Under advanced system options, brings up a dialog box here. Click on the advanced tab and you want to adjust the visual effects for best performance. Also in the control panel, under folder options, as highlighted here, click on the view tab and unselect use sharing wizard. Still in control panel, under internet options, if we're using the Wonderware information server, one of the things I've found tends to work better is if you select the browsing history settings and tell Internet Explorer to check for a new web page every time you visit the page. This sometimes can cause issue with, with caching and, and temporary files and things not looking the way you'd expect them to look. Uh, normally, I believe this is set for automatic. I, I always set this to every time I visit the page. Also in Internet Options, where we just were on the General tab, now we're going to pop over here to the Advanced tab. And again, this is only relevant if you're using Information Server. Unselect the option for Check for Publisher Certificate Revocation. This causes, when you go to the Information Server home page, it spends a lot of time waiting for the page to load. It's, it's checking for that certificate revocation, so uncheck that. Still in control panel, this time we're going to look under the Windows Update Change Settings. So there's a couple of options that you have here. As a good recommended practice, we don't recommend turning on and installing updates automatically. Wonderware publishes whether or not updates are certified within 15 business days of them being released. So it's advisable to check under WDN before you just automatically push patches out. So may not be feasible to turn this off and never check for updates so you might want to select the option that I have highlighted there to check for updates but let me choose whether or not to download and install them. In either case it's always good to check the uh, on WDN the security portal portion of that site to verify whether an update is, is approved by Wonderware or not. Still in control panel under Windows Firewall and this is not required but as a good idea depending on what your how your network is set up so there's multiple levels of firewalls you may be using a, a corporate level firewall the operating system also includes a firewall so if you choose to leave the firewall on once you run a Wonderware installer it will go and 
uh, punch the necessary holes in the firewall, which are documented to let our, our services and, and pieces of software communicate properly. So you can either verify that that was done or turn this off. Um, I personally turn it off. One thing to note is occasionally when you're running an install, it will uh, turn it back on even after you've turned it off. So uh, it's always good just to verify that either it's off or the appropriate exclusions have been added. So another common issue that we see is the date time. So by default, Windows tries to synchronize with a uh, external time server, time.windows.com.com. So you can turn that off. Now you want to have a strategy to address your time. So there are a number of, of options and solutions available. Some of them are free, some of them require external software. Um, so you can, you can accomplish this with the VM tools. Um, if, if you have your physical host synchronizing with an NTP time source, you can have all the guests on that host synchronize to the host. <clears throat> you can do that in Active Directory. You can do that with a Windows batch file using the command net time backslash backslash computer name forward slash set forward slash y. And that just makes it non-interactive so it automatically sets the source computer to a target computer. You put that in a batch file, set up a Windows scheduled task. Uh, or the various Wonderware products. So if you're using Wonderware application server, you can go into the Galaxy menu and set up a Time Master. This will use the um, uh, where the platform is deployed to periodically synchronize time. And there's also settings in the historian to have it go synchronize with its data sources. So you just need a strategy. It doesn't matter really which one you use. Oftentimes I'll see where customers will have conflicting strategies. So they'll have batch files running and the internet time turned on. So you want to avoid multiple time synchronizations. Um, you may or may not be using the, the built-in um, VM tools, what it's doing. So you just be aware of what your time sync strategy is and, and you wanna come up with a strategy. So the next thing we can do is open up a command prompt and turn off hibernation. This will, executing the command you see here will also uh, we'll turn off and delete the hibernation file. So the next thing we'll do is go into the Wonderware system management console. If we expand the log viewer, default group, local, and right click and select the configure option. If we select storage, by default you'll notice that the, uh, the log files will store until there's 5,000 megabytes of disk space used by the log, which is five gigs. So I usually put this to a more reasonable number, 500 megs, 50 megs. Uh, you could also set this to a different path here, but set it to a more reasonable number. Trying to open a five gig log file takes a long, long time. So what other things are important? Well, we want to make sure if we have a virus scanner to add the appropriate exclusions. In general, you could just exclude everything with a Wonderware and an Orchestra, a star on either side of that, but if you want an exhaustive list, you can go to the, to the URL displayed on the screen. We also want to be cognizant of any group policies if we're logged in uh, into an Active Directory domain. So there's a number of different ones of those. Some of them are documented, some of them are not, but if you can get a, a listing of the policies that you're using and work with us in tech support, we can help you to uh, which ones that you'd want to use. Um, Oftentimes I see customers who, who don't defragment the drives. So I, I like to think of a computer sort of as a car. You know, you have to change your oil and you have to do routine maintenance and, and defragmenting of the drives is, is something that, that you'll want to do. So there's a built-in defragment utility that's built into Windows that's not by default turned on to run in a scheduled mode. So you can run that and, and set that thing to run in a non-peak time, maybe once a month or something like that. And then lastly, uh, a backup strategy. So do you have a backup strategy? If you're using VM images, are you backing them up in VMs? Do you have backups happening in the image? So I've seen customers who don't realize that they have both running and it's either one or the other is necessary depending upon the products that you have. Some of our products are, are only stateful in, in runtime, so it's not really that important that you back up an object server that's running in runtime. Perhaps you want to spend a little bit of extra energy backing up the Galaxy repository 
uh, or the historian's uh, history blocks as opposed to its runtime database because that's you know rebuilt when the objects re when the galaxy redeploys anyway so thank you for your time today and if you have any questions don't hes hesitate to give us a call thank you